Hello friends, welcome to risingpearl.com. I'm your friend, your host Roy. Friends, this is series one where we are discussing real numbers, webisode number 23. And today's video is really a wrap or a conclusion of our series one. Now in this video, we are going to go back and take a look at a list of all the things we have learned throughout this series. I'm going to provide those as a list. And if you click on any item in the list, it will take you to the video that talks a lot more in detail about that particular topic. So now we started off this series by talking about what is meant by Euclid's division lemma. Then we learned how to apply Euclid's division lemma to find out HCF or highest common factor and sometimes also known as GCF, greatest common factor. Then we learn some of the number properties and their relationship with Euclid's division lemma and how we can solve some of the questions that relate to the number properties. Then we learned what do we mean by fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We also learned different applications of fundamental theorem of arithmetic and what kind of questions we may get in the exams and how we actually apply our knowledge of fundamental theorem of arithmetic to solve those type of questions. Then we learned prime factorization and what is its relationship to fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Prime factorization is a concept that we have learned in our earlier classes. So this particular topic, prime factorization, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, basically establishes what is the relationship between these two very important concepts. Then we move on to learning finding HCF using prime factorization. We then learn finding LCM, or lowest common multiple, using prime factorization. We found a special relationship that exists between HCF and LCM of a given pair of numbers. And we then went on to learn a very special theorem which is based on the concept of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Then as we continued through the series, we learned proving irrational numbers and little bit differently. Why? Because we have learned how to prove irrational numbers in our last season earlier classes. In this particular video, we learned how to prove irrational numbers a little bit differently using concepts that we learned in this particular series. Then we learned about the relationship between rational numbers and their terminating decimal expansions. We know what is a rational number, any number that can be established as p by q where p, q are both integers and q denominator is not equal to zero. But looking at a rational number, how can we tell if it has a terminating decimal expansion? We learned a great deal about that. And finally, we learned about rational numbers and their non-terminating but repeating decimal expansions. How looking at a rational number we can tell if that rational number will have terminating or non-terminating uh, decimal expansions. So we learned a great deal about this. So friends, this video is supposed to be meant as a recap. So if you want to know more about any of these particular topics, simply just click on the link and it will take you to the details of that video. So friends, this concludes our series one. I look forward to talking to you for series two. Till then, goodbye.